What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Bill Dead Bill. Now they say that it's hard to capture lightning in a bottle. I say, isn't that just moonshine? Just kidding guys, that is not moonshine. That stuff's in the freezer. This is water. I would not drink moonshine before this video. Maybe some others, not this one, because what we're doing today is actually incredibly dangerous. So just to prove that it is not moonshine, I shall do this. Now, if I don't die in the next five minutes, you know that I just drink a bunch of water. Whew, when I got that out of the tap, it was warm. <laughs> On Build Dead Build, normally we play with fire, but today we're gonna be playing with electricity. And as much as I joke about it a little bit, let's be very clear. There is enough electricity coming from one of these leads to the other to stop your heart like no longer living, like pushing up daisies, I'm not kidding. You need to make sure your workspace is completely safe before you deal with this machine. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in here real quick. As I'm editing this video, I realized that I never say the name of this machine. It is called a Lichtenberg machine and what we're doing is called fractal burning. All right, now go back to that maniac. I know some of you are going to complain about me talking too much in the beginning of this video because that's what you do when I talk about safety. But I have to be very clear. These machines can be made. If you make them incorrectly, they're even more likely to stop your heart or put you in the hospital. We're not really joking around right now. Well, you know me, I'm always joking around a little bit, but I'm not joking around about this. Now, the machine I'm using, I purchased. I have been asked to do fractal burning for a very long time and I did not want to build a machine and encourage other people to go out and build a machine without the knowledge on how to do it. For everybody's safety out there, I didn't want to put something out in the, into the universe where people could try to replicate something that I was doing, not have them know how to do it, and, or injure themselves, or worse. I actually found a company that builds a Lichtenberg machine. They build a machine that is safer then if you built one yourself, that does not mean that you don't need to make sure that your entire workspace is good to go before you use this machine. Now I'd reached out to this company, I wanted to partner up with them, they said no. So I'm not going to link to the company down below, however I want you to be safe. If you guys are really interested in purchasing one of these machines, email me at nick at builddeadbuild.com and I will give you the details. Okay, so safety precautions that I have taken. I am working on a wooden bench. You don't want to have any sort of bench that has any sort of metal toolings on it or for that matter, any sort of metal fasteners. You can arc to a fastener. This bench is actually my butcher block top uh, bench that I glued together and then all the fasteners come in from the bottom. I will link it up here. I was going to use a different bench and I forgot that it's got the metal T-Tracks in it. So I, I definitely wanted to stick, stay away from that. Next thing that I have on my bench is just a couple of rubber mats. That's just to make sure that anything that there may be that is conductive on the bench is, is covered. <clears throat> I'm also wearing rubber soled shoes. I, I have a rubber mat on the floor. My brother, who's an electrical engineer, did point out the fact that since I'm on concrete, I'm already on a non-conductive surface. But the rubber mat's more there to remind me to where to keep my feet. I want to make sure that I'm not going to bump into anything or fall over or just anything like that. Also, if you purchase one of these units, it does come with these, condu these rubber conductive gloves. This is probably one of the safest ways to handle this. You'll see me using the machine without those gloves that is because I do know that my I am grounded and that my workspace is good to go one other thing that I would suggest is to keep an eye on like metal items like I take my belt off when I do this so my belt buckle doesn't come in contact with anything anyway you just want to make sure that you don't arc, you're not gonna arc over to anything metallic I feel like I've talked for a very long time on safety, but I want you to be very clear that this is not something that you should just mess with, man. I mean, make sure that you know what you're doing before you use this machine. It even comes with a big old warning just like that inside it. You can send it back in 30 days if you're scared of it. No questions asked. Okay, so now that moonshine's really starting to kick in. 
<laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, so now we want to prep our wood. I've done this technique on pine and that is it. Pine is not really a suggested wood and what I did notice is that since you do have your soft cellulose and hard cellulose material in pine, it tends to follow the soft cellulose material until it gets to a line of, of hard and it, so a lot of times that'll reroute it. So, so sometimes you get some like really kind of uniform vertical lines when you want more of an organic pattern. So what we're gonna work with today is just a couple of things I picked up at the hardwood store. I have some soft maple. I have a little cherry. I have some purple heart, because why not? I have some red oak, and I have some ash. I wanna say all of these except the, uh, except the purple heart were like suggested woods for this, but I was looking at the purple heart, it's dense enough that I, it's either gonna like not conduct this at all, or it's gonna give a pretty decent pattern. So um, we're just gonna check all those out. Prop work is as follows. What we're gonna do is I have here, two cups of water and two tablespoons of baking soda. So a tablespoon of baking soda per cup of water, pretty much the best solution. You need to introduce some electrolytes into the wood or it won't conduct the electricity very well. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just gonna paint this on, we might use the other side of that because it's all gross. So what you wanna do is just kind of paint a coat on. We're gonna let that soak in and we'll come back and hit it one more time right right before we get ready to burn. And if you notice, I'm doing this on a towel. I was, when I was working with this machine before, I was, I was putting this on in the same place that I was actually applying the electricity. And what I noticed is, you know, sometimes you got a little water stand in there and you, you don't want that. So I, I started doing it in a different place just to, uh, just to be a little bit more safe. Okay, so we're gonna give that a few minutes to soak in. Okay, it's my understanding that you want your boards wet, but not like standing water on top of them wet. So what I'm doing now is just wiping the tops off. As you guys probably know, uh, hardwoods, you'll have more water kind of sit on top, whereas like if you put water on like pine, it soaks in a lot. So just wiping these guys off. Purple Heart looks really weird when it gets wet. <laughs> um, I don't even know, like I don't know if you can see that. There's almost like a blue color in there right now. Okay, now that we have that going, I'm gonna start off with a little ash. So this machine has two leads. You keep your hands behind the leads and we're just gonna pick two points. Also has a foot pedal to turn on and off. It's time for round two of experiments. One, I'm gonna do a little bit more work on this, but does anybody know if Purple Heart turns back from green to purple after it's been wet? I'm assuming that's a reaction with the baking soda, but I'm kind of curious if it's gonna stay green. But I've wetted this one back down. I'm gonna let it sit for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna hit it with the Latinin a little bit more because this seems to be the most conductive of the surfaces. So I just kind of want to play with it a little bit more because I haven't seen too much burning done on Purple Heart. Now what I've also done is grabbed another kind of live edge scrap here and what I'm going to do is just cut out like a very small charcuterie board um, shape from this and see, see what we can do with that. I've never made a charcuterie board before so this may suck. Okay guys, we are upstairs now. I'm gonna do a little epoxy on two of these pieces. I have my charcuterie board where I just kind of came up and did a little Lichtenberg, Lichtenberg on the side here. And um, I have my purple heart, which is now green, <laughs> which I'm assuming that just uh, happens, I guess it's just the reaction of the baking soda because 
I mean, like the back got wet and some of it is still purple. We're working with tabletop epoxy today. That is just uh, because we're pouring really small uh, little areas and we're gonna see how this does. The, the, the burned areas aren't super deep, so I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna turn out, but I'm gonna mix up uh, some blue and some purple, and then we're just gonna pour. I'm gonna use my little trusty, dusty, dusty? It's not dusty, it's clean, uh, kinda. Uh, I'm gonna use my little scraper thing here to just kinda take off the excess, clean that up, uh, and then we'll probably come back tomorrow, sand them down, and see what they look like. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Okay guys, it is a day later and I have my my advanced projects here. I guess that's what I'm calling them. So here's the green purple heart with purple epoxy. We're gonna try to sand that back. Right now it's really kind of hard to see, even under the lights. I'm gonna try to sand it back and see if I can't get the green to go a little lighter so you can see it better. Now the charcuterie board on the other hand looks really, really good. It's very subtle but there is a nice blue epoxy in those burn lines. So we're gonna sand this down as well and see if we can't just take this, you know, this little thin layer of epoxy off here. I got a little on the back, things like that. And if you think for a second that you have any excuse to not glove up, you're wrong, mister. This is. All right guys, we're back in the shop again. It is a day later. I just wanted to give the finish time to dry. Now let's go over our results. Okay, so first we have ash. As you can see, it is running into the hard cellulose material or the, or the, the thick grain in the wood. And that's what gives you these lines. You also don't get a whole lot of fingering on here. I mean, you get a little bit of organic shape, uh, but there's not a whole lot of detail in the fingering. Next up, we have red oak, which is kind of doing the same thing. It is it is still following those, those dense lines, so we're, that's the reason we get kind of these boxy shapes. You do get a little bit more fingering in the detail. I would think if you're really careful about which piece of red oak you picked, you might get a little bit more of an organic burn than this. But this is still kind of following the line. So we still get kind of that not so organic look, that not the look we're looking for. All right, then we have cherry. And this cherry looks really good. We get some really good organic shapes in here. We have some really good detail in the fingering. I don't know if you know, like I'll see if that'll even pick it up. There are some really, really tight, 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 little tiny fingers coming off this. Not so great for epoxy, but as far as that detail goes for just overall, that looks amazing. I really like the way that cherry turned out. So next we have soft maple, which as you saw in the sped up footage when we were burning it, does these nice long lines with the fingers. I think this is a little bit better of a combination than even with the cherry. You get one nice big channel and then like little fingers coming off of it. So this is uh, my first shot at like a charcuterie board type situation. I don't know if, I don't know how well you can see it, but there is blue, there we go. We did do a blue epoxy in those lines to just kind of give them a little bit of an extra pop. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm a huge fan. Um, I also hit this with a little cutting board wax. Just, I just used Clark's cutting board finish. Unfortunately, I just forgot to uh, forgot to record it. So, uh, so this has the walrus oil and then a little cutting board wax on it as well. And now we we have what I would call the star of the show. The Purple Heart did turn green with the baking soda, which is kind of an interesting look anyway, but when I started to sand it back, some of the purple started to come back through. So I probably sanded a little bit more than I normally would have just because I wanted to get some more of that purple through, but we still have some of that green in there. And the only thing that I wish is I wish I would have used a different color of epoxy in here now because that purple, having having brought the purple back out in the wood, that purple is not popping nearly as much as it would if that was a different color. You can see it right there, you can see that detail. And it does look a little bit better in person. The, the lights are definitely kind of washing that out a little bit. But 
the end product is amazing. Morning. <laughs> it's not morning. All right, guys. So I think that's it. I don't really have a whole lot to go over after the fact. I'm pretty sure I failed to mention that after you burn, you want to take your stock and you want to go put it in the sink and go after it with like a nylon brush or something. You just want to get all the soot you can out of the fractal burns. Uh, if not, when you go to like apply any sort of finish or stuff, you're going to pull that soot into your finish and it's going to muddy it up. I think we can all agree that this is amazing this was not even like i had no idea this result was going to happen but i think it just looks fantastic and it's probably the thumbnail but guys i hope you enjoyed coming along for the ride and enjoyed the experiments uh we'll definitely be doing some more fractal burning in the future but before i go i'd like to give an extra special clinkies out to all of my patrons you guys are the ones that make the magic happen Especially, see, I just have it on my phone now because I'm not, I'm never gonna remember all these names. Nick the Greek, Stephen Mann, Eric Weiss, Easy MF and E, uh, Derek Coates, Caveman Ross, Chuck Faulkner, and The Weekend DIY. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. It just really helps me out. And if you know somebody who would be interested in watching these videos, do me a favor and share this video with them. We need to grow this M ever. <laughs> All right, guys, until next time, thanks for playing. And now I gotta get to work on this coffee. <laughs>